It is that time of the year, guys. It's almost Christmas, and it's also day 24 on the Camino Frances, breaking it down with the help of a Google Earth Pro. Supplemental material to the vlog series that I shot in 2017, almost three years ago. And we're nine days away from uh, Santiago. Today is a 27 kilometer day. We're gonna climb just a little bit to Cruz de Fierro. And then from there, it's just a steep decline. We're losing about a thousand meters of uh, elevation. And we're getting to Ponferrada, another one of those highlights of the Camino Frances. But before we go into today's stage, let's go over the Camino de Santiago as a whole. I promise you guys we're almost there. The Camino de Santiago, the Camino Frances, which we're doing today, stretches about 800 kilometers from St. John Pied de Port all the way to Santiago de Compostela. And if you go an extra 100 kilometers, you can make it to uh, Fisterra, the end of the world, or Muxia. As you make your way across uh, northern Spain, uh, westbound, you're going to go through different autonomous regions and uh, provinces. And we start with the province of Navarra, followed by the wine region of La Rioja, followed by the massive Castilla y León. Within Castilla y León, we have three provinces, and that is the province of Burgos, followed by Palencia, and finally León, where we are right now, up ahead. You know, once we're done with all the climbing, it's Galicia. Then you're going to go through uh, Lugo, followed by A Coruña. Here's uh, today's stage. We're going to go over it with the help of the elevation profile. And as I mentioned before, a 27-kilometer day. Easy when it comes to uh, the terrain. We're just doing a little bit of climbing. Not too bad. Then we're going to hang in there for a little bit before we descend about a 1,000 meters. It's going to rain. It's a rainy day. Not too bad. Not like a pouring, harsh pouring rain, but we're going to get a few drizzles and we're also going to walk through a cloud. So we got a lot in store up ahead. The day started at 6.30 in the morning when I woke up at the albergue. This one was the only one where they have a, a limit. Nobody could get out of the albergue before 6.30, which is great. I mean, sometimes pilgrims start waking up around 5 in the morning. And once they do, it's hard to stay asleep. So I just toss and turn in bed until it's like 6.30 before I get up. Breakfast was at 7 a.m. So it was a packed house. I had a toast. Café con leche and a side of a toilet paper. <laughs> they had a roll there and we split it in between all the pilgrims just as, you know, backup in case uh, nature calls along the way. It was 721 when I left the albergue and I started climbing. We're at about 1,425 meters and we're going to 1,500. So 75 meter climb on a dirt path. We're going to crisscross the road, which will be the bike trail if you're doing the Camino by, by bike. We're two kilometers away from uh, the Cruz de Fierro, and as you leave town, there's a cross here, a wooden cross, and just started climbing. I can see down below in the valley, the fog and the cloudy atmosphere. It was pretty cool. My Achilles tendons were killing me once again. I guess I'm on the mountain. You start using muscles that are you're not used to before, so you have to acclimatize and get ready for all this climbing. Not since the first day on the Camino Frances when we went over the Pyrenees have we done so much climbing. 7.42 in the morning, tried again my luck at the rock stacking here. Made it to a Cruz de Fierro at 7.50 in the morning, so not too bad, not too long. There you got here a rest area, you have Ermita de Santiago on the side. Now the cross used to be a Roman altar to Mercury. And here you can see a huge pile of pebbles or rocks that every single one of them a pilgrim brought either from their home or from down below. And they represent a sin or a burden that you have been carrying with you all your life. And you're supposed to just leave it here behind. I got some shots with the drone. The only time that I was able to fly before I made it to Ponferrada because the minute I landed it, it started drizzling. And I think it was just a little bit wet by the time I put it in my backpack. And from here, we're about 2.3 kilometers away from a Manjarin, 8.09 in the morning. We're here now kind of like traversing, just going up and down just a little bit until we get to like the second highest point of the day before we do the major uh, descent. So as you can see, we're walking by the road on the side, on the shoulder, on your dedicated path for pilgrims. It was muddy terrain. Yeah, muddy. So I had to put on my rain gear. I found a flower, which I put right here next to uh, my shoulder. And I made my way down until I made it to a snack bar. One of those Donativo ones that where there's nobody there. It's just for pilgrims uh, to get uh, water or something to eat and just leave a donation uh, behind. Continue on walking before made it to Refugio de Marjarin. 
beautiful place very rustic very medieval looking i mean the whole town is just ruins destroyed kind of like from Sebadon. here you have a, a signpost with uh, arrows pointing to different cities all over the world 222 kilometers to santiago from here and i went in to get an orange juice to get some freshly squeezed orange juice and they only have fanta so i decided to skip it inside i could see flags from all over the place from all over the world and yeah, I don't remember getting a stamp from this place. Maybe I did. I had to check my uh, my pilgrim passport. Or you can go to my website where I keep track of all the stamps that I collect along the way. 6.6 .6 kilometers from the next town. And here we're walking, going up and down, descending, gaining some ground. We're 5 kilometers away from the next town. We're also at the 25% of the way for today already. And it was only 9 o'clock in the morning. They had a food truck here where I got some orange juice. And I also had a banana as a snack. Continue on walking. And we're almost at the second highest point of the day. At 1,511 meters of elevation. And from this point on, we're going to be descending, as I mentioned before, 1,000 meters. So all that the, we climbed yesterday and today, we're just going to drop it. And it's going to take us a while before we make it to... Uh, Molina Seca. So we're walking next to the road. You can see cyclists passing you by every now and then. I don't think you could actually ride your bicycle on the path in this section because it has one of the roughest uh, terrain that I had on the entire Camino. And it was a rainy day, so all the rocks were wet, slippery. And this is also where we started walking inside a cloud, which was very eerie and cool kind of reminded me when i was climbing uh, kilimanjaro i had a similar experience and you know in that case there was no <laughs> vegetation so it felt like in, i was in another planet so almost at 10 a.m in the morning descending and we make it to el acevedo this is a small village and even though they have a couple of albergues and uh, private accommodations i did not see any life out in the streets could have been because it was raining so I quickly made my way through the small town and from here we are three kilometers away from the next town from Riego and instead of following the actual Camino I just took uh, the main road all the pilgrims were walking on the road because the trail was very muddy and uh, it was just difficult uh, terrain but just for a little bit because as I made it here to this spot I reconnected with the Camino once again we're 1.5 kilometers away and from here you can see the ruins of another small village in the distance and a Spaniard told me that this was a major issue in, the, in Spain like the young people were abandoning all the village in the rural towns and just heading to Madrid and the major uh, cities so only the small towns and villages where the Camino cuts through you know you have a little bit of infrastructure that keeps the town alive we're at the halfway point and we're making our way down to another small village and that is the village of Riego de Ambrose. Here's when I was talking about my beer. I was trying to grow my beer, something that I don't normally do in my everyday life. So I just have patches, but I guess people love the way uh, it looks. I just wanted to show like a physical change, a progression from when I started in St. John Pierre de Port and when I got to the end of the world, I wanted to look rough, man. <laughs> So the town has a municipal albergue and it also has a water fountain. <laughs> so I left it behind at 10.41 in the morning. I made my way down, down. We're only 4.3 kilometers away from a Molina Seca. And the minute you leave this town, I found a little stretch that was just horrible. It was just exposed rocks that you were walking down, very steep and wet. So the trifecta, I could have easily uh, twisted my ankle here and it would have been the end of my Camino. So I slowly made my way down to the base here at 1056 where they have a little stream and a bridge that I had to go over. I was seeing here the blue arrows pointing in the opposite direction. As you know, some pilgrims do the Camino in reverse or they also walk to Jerusalem or Rome. But I was going forward, so I continue on walking, following the road in and out two kilometers away from town and an hour later i finally made it to molina seca some pilgrims decide to uh, call it a day and stay in this town instead of continue on to ponferrada went over the bridge also iglesia de san nicolas here on the left hand side and i saw a bakery that had a huge loaf of bread and i decided to have something to eat here for lunch so i got myself a tortilla pincho 
And a cafe con leche. And as I was having lunch out here, the bells started uh, going off at uh, noon. And I also saw a van that transports uh, backpacks from one albergue to the other. The town, very lively one. You have a million uh, bars, cafes in this main street. You also have private accommodations and municipal albergue if you want to stay here. And on the other side, by the Crusado, they also have a pilgrim statue. And from here, you have 7.5 kilometers to Ponferrada. If you follow the Camino, there's a variant up ahead, which you can use if you want to make today's stage a little bit uh, shorter. We're already at the 75% of the way. And from here, all the way to Ponferrada, you're following a road. You're not going into the countryside anymore. You're on the shoulder. You got plenty of space. Flat terrain for the most part. And here's where you have that the split on the road. You have an option to make here. I did not know about it at the time. So I continue on walking 4.25 uh, kilometers to go to the Adberg in Ponferrada. But if you make a right turn, you only have to go for 2.9 kilometers. You're going to follow the road for just a little bit. And then you're going to go behind some uh, industrial polygon industrial, a small one before making it over the railroad tracks and to the municipal albergue. In retrospect, I wish I would have taken that route if I would have known about it. So if you download the GPS tracks, you can follow that. But it all depends on the day. I mean, if it's an easy day and you just want to enjoy it and uh, take your time before you make it to the albergue, by all means, follow the Camino. But if you're there in a pinch, if it's raining, if it's horrible weather, or if it's late in the afternoon, then you can take uh, this alternative. I continue on walking, and in the next uh, town, you have an ermita, and there's also a Roman uh, fountain on the right-hand side here. Did not know about it at the time. I think I saw a sign, but I just I was just following the yellow arrow, so I continue on walking. You're going through like a suburban neighborhood with a few bars along the way. And here, 126 in the afternoon, made it to uh, this uh, bridge over the river. And instead of following the yellow arrows in this direction, which kind of takes you to the city center of Ponferrada, I just went over this bridge just to uh, get there already. <laughs> made a right turn here in front of this uh, Crusado. And finally made it to the albergue, to the municipal albergue, which, by the way, is away from the city center. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I like to stay as close as possible to the city center because I don't want to be walking a few kilometers back and forward and I want to be where the action is at. But this uh, burger is away from it, right next to this uh, huge uh, parking lot. The great thing is that you have a Capilla de Nuestra Señora del Carmen in here. You have a Crusado. You have a 202 kilometer stone marker to Santiago. And on this corner over here, you have a mural on the side of a building that is very eye-catching. And I see a lot of uh, people posting pictures of it. The No Change, No Border Flights uh, mural. And in this albergue, which is by donation, I bump for the very first time into Ramon. He's a Spaniard from the Canary Islands that I thought for sure was Cuban just from his accent. And the more I spoke to him, the more I realized that the Cuban slang and the way our mannerisms and uh, the way that we speak is very much like the people from the Canary Islands. I also met another pilgrim, Fernando from Barcelona, and the three of us are going to walk together all the way to Santiago de Compostela. I decided to visit uh, the city center, so I headed over there with just my camera and the drone. And the first stop was El Castillo de los Templarios. What an amazing uh, castle, guys. If you're into the nice Templars, then this is a place that you have to visit. Spend a couple of hours in here. You get a pilgrim discount if you show them your pilgrim passport. You can visit uh, the library where they have a collection of uh, relics, books, artifacts. They even have some weapons in there. You can uh, walk the grounds. I even climbed one of the towers and I was just getting beauty shots of the city from up there. It's just an amazing uh, castle that you can spend some time in here. From there, I made my way to uh, the main uh, square, Basilica Nuestra Señora de la Encina. And here's where I decided to have a dinner at a bar. 7.53 in the evening, I had some uh, tomato mozzarella salad with a lomo for dinner, with wine, and a flan for dessert. I also bump into uh, the Czech guy, the guy that I met the first day on La Meseta, then in Leon, 
and now here the, he this is the last time that we met he was walking with his dog and he told me as i mentioned before that he's from the czech republic he's been walking or wandering uh, europe for the last eight years so i guess he's homeless and his plan was to go back to the czech republic get a donkey get a guard dog and then make his way to uh, the the himalayas so and then on my way back to the albergue i pass under the clock tower walking through uh, the streets of uh, Ponferrada, beautiful town quite a few pilgrims decide to start from here they just go to the train station and this is an alternative from starting in either leon or Sarria, Sarria to Santiago, as you guys know, is the last 100 kilometers to Santiago. And if you want the Compostela, that is the minimum that you have to do. But this one, you're gonna get a little bit of everything because we're still gonna be climbing in the days ahead. 8:45, where I sign off from this corner before going to the albergue and calling it a day. And that was day 24 in the Camino Frances. Tomorrow we're climbing, we're climbing some more, and it's gonna be another rainy day. Yes, I know. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the series. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and now you can become a member and support all the future pilgrimage and expedition. I guess I'll see you guys on the next video.